But I want to thank you, um, all of you, for joining me here today. I want to talk a little bit about what's been going on in, in Beacon Hill. And I know a, a topic which a lot of folks have interested in, especially those are around the Bridgewater area, and that is the topic of expanded uh, gaming here in, the, in Massachusetts, which the House passed um, just last week. Um, I don't think I have to tell anyone here that these have been very difficult um, fiscal times. Uh, we're facing an unemployment rate here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts of some 9%. Uh, As a matter of fact, there was a Northeastern University uh, study which talked about the fact that we here in Massachusetts are, are in what is called a blue-collar uh, depression. For every job that's out there in the construction and trade fields, there are about 65 people who are seeking uh, employment in that field. Uh, so it is my feeling, and I think it's abundantly clear to, I think, everyone at the State House that we have to talk about um, bringing and, you know, and keeping more jobs here in the Commonwealth of, of, of Massachusetts. Next week, we in the House are going to be debating our fiscal year um, 11 budget, which I would have to say in the almost 20 years that I've been there, this has been the most difficult budget we have ever had to face. As a matter of fact, some people have stated that in, in terms of budgets, this is probably the most difficult time that we have faced as a commonwealth and even as a nation since the Great uh, Depression, just to give you an idea of the dire financial circumstances we find ourselves in. First of all, the budget which we are going to be proposing next week is not going to have any increase um, in taxes. Uh, what I have learned, especially in traveling around the state, um, is that people right now, I believe, are living, living paycheck to paycheck. So it is my feeling, and I think the membership uh, will agree, we'll see next week, is that any discussion um, for, for, of any tax increase, I think we're putting too much of a burden on the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But it, the focus that we're going to have this year, uh, especially in the House, is going to be on the, the creation of jobs, jobs and more jobs here. Um, and I think that we in the House have already acted on a number of initiatives which are going to do just that in terms of creating jobs. The first thing that we have done, uh, which we did actually back in January, was to make, for, make sure that our workforce development programs here in Massachusetts, first of all, were fully restored for this fiscal year and will be fully funded for next fiscal year um, as well. We passed legislation that, that provided some $9.5 million for workforce training programs here in Massachusetts. Um, and in the House budget that we've just, just, just filed, again, we just made sure that these uh, workforce training program was fully funded as, as, as well. Um, and I can tell you firsthand how that, how that operates. As being the Speaker of the House gives me the opportunity, I think, to travel around the Commonwealth and see firsthand where our tax money is going, how it's working, if it's not working. And I had the opportunity last, uh, last fall, I guess it was, to, vi to visit the Callaway Golf Company in Chicopee. I'm not sure how many golfers that we have uh, here, um, but it was a fascinating place to you know, see the production of golf clubs and especially the, the, you know, the golf, golf balls, and, you know, which were you know, being sold and used throughout the, throughout the world for that matter. But last year, they were having trouble. They were having trouble retaining workers because of the, uh, the need to teach these folks how to uh, use the new high-tech equipment. And as a result of the money which they received from this workforce training program, they were able to do that. They were able to do that and in turn make sure that all these jobs which would have been, would have been lost overseas now will remain here in, in, in Massachusetts. Um, the, the funding which we approved in the House will, su will support grants that through the beginning of this year have provided more than $175 million to train almost of a quarter of a million workers here in Massachusetts. Uh, in addition to that, um, again, as part of our uh, uh, supplementary budget, which we took up in, in March, um, you probably saw where the House uh, retained the film tax credit here in, in Massachusetts um, as well. That we were, there were various amendments and proposals out there to see that this would be deleted from the state budget. 
And I think that it's imperative that we keep that type of film tax credit here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I have seen all too readily what that has meant to many of the businesses of, of the Commonwealth. Not only, obviously, are we bringing in people in the making of the films and whatnot, and those people are using hotels and motels, which normally probably wouldn't be used, especially during the winter months, but what it has meant to some of the other businesses around the area, such as the uh, food industry, uh, the floral industry. I spoke to a, a gentleman who, who rents furniture in Chelsea, Massachusetts, who told me that without that film tax credit, he would probably be he would probably be closed right about now. So I think that that is part of the mentality, I hope, here in Massachusetts, that we do things like this, that we keep tax credits like that so that we can grow jobs and more jobs here in the Commonwealth. And I believe, anyways, that that's what the, the film tax credit is, is all about. Um, in addition to that, let me talk a little bit about uh, probably the major topic of the conversation. Um, it's an area which we just had a vote on just last week, and that was increasing gaming here in the Commonwealth of, 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 of Massachusetts. Uh, and I will tell you that um, the vote which we have received in the House was very, very gratifying uh, to me. Uh, it was 120 members for and only 37 members against. Uh, there are some people who have told me that in, in a two-year cycle, that was the biggest turnaround, vote turnaround on a subject matter that they have ever seen in the history of the, of the Commonwealth, uh, which made it especially more gratifying to me as one of the chief sponsors of the bill. But what, the way I look at it is that if we're going to talk about bringing jobs back to Massachusetts or keep jobs in Massachusetts, then this is the way that we have to uh, go. The bill that we provided I think was more of a balanced approach, and I think that's one of the most important aspects of this legislation. It's, it's balanced and in terms of maximizing the benefit to the people throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, I believe it's going to directly help our economy by the creation of construction, hotel, and service industry jobs. And it's going to help working family as well, because part of the funding formula in terms of where that the gaming revenue is going to go it's going to go towards education, it's going to go towards local aid, it's going to go to tourism, manufacturing, and the vital programs at some of our community colleges uh, at well that was going to train our students in terms of the skills that they need to succeed. Not only, I would say, the community colleges, but the state colleges or state universities as well, uh, wherever they may be called at the time. But um, what this bill has done is, is, is a couple of things. Number one, the bill proposes that there will be two resort casinos uh, to be selected throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Now, who will do the selecting? There's going to be a special commission um, which will be um, chosen by the governor, the attorney general, and the treasurer who will have the opportunity to appoint some five members who will do a study as to where in Massachusetts a casino should be located. This will be done after review of a the you know, various uh, market analysis to decide what part of the state would be best to make sure that we get the biggest bang for our, our butt. And I know that I, I believe uh, that, I'm not sure about the Bridgewater area, but I know that I think New Bedford and Fall River in particular are very much in the, in, in the hunt in terms of making a, a proposal for, uh, for a casino in, the, in, in, in this part of the state. In addition to that, anyone who applies for a casino here in Massachusetts is going to have to make a minimum investment of $500 million in, in, in capital investment in order to receive a license. We're estimating that the amount of money that people are going to put in their application in terms of investing is going to go anywhere from $500 million to $1 billion in terms of uh, putting money into these uh, uh, facilities. So that you're not only going to have a casino, you're obviously going to have a resort resort, hotel, as well as other amenities as, as well. But what I'm excited about is over time uh, is the amount of people that these facilities are going to um, employ. We estimate that in terms of not only the construction jobs, but in terms of the, the jobs at the facilities and the 
in the hotels, that we're talking an increase in job numbers here in Massachusetts of a minimum of 15,000. That's a conservative figure to somewhere around 18,000. So I think that any time you can talk about 50, bringing 15,000 15, new jobs into the Commonwealth, I think is, is an important, and, I, and, I, and that's what I'm really looking forward to, again, so that we can grow the Massachusetts economy. In addition to that, we have the proposal which I have set forth uh, will provide some 750 slot machines at the various racetrack uh, facilities. Uh, I'm not, I don't think uh, Raynham is too far from here. I don't believe it's, it's hop, skip, and a jump away. So, um, uh, so I, I have come to know, especially talking to the, the state representatives and state senators from this area, what some of the jobs at, at, at facilities such as Raynham means. I mean, I can tell you I have two racetracks in my district, in Suffolk Downs and in, in Wonderland. But I also know in terms of Plain Ridge and Raynham, exactly the number of people that, that could be losing their jobs, uh, obviously, especially with the, uh, with the, with the, with the stopping of the uh, uh, Greyhound uh, racing here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But it is estimated there are a minimum of 674 jobs that are at these racing facilities. It is also stated that if slots were to come up on board, we could be talking about 1,000 new jobs here in the Commonwealth as a result of these facilities. Um, Many people have stated, or I shouldn't say many, but there have been those who have stated that they don't look at these jobs as, I don't know, important or, or sort of uh, disposable, that we should be looking in terms of making our investment away from the racetracks and into other uh, investments that we could make. But I think that's wrong. I think it's wrong because of the fact that uh, many of you, especially if you live in this particular area, you probably know someone who works at one of these facilities. You also probably know someone that not only work there, but they see that this facility provides uh, money uh, for their particular, um, for their family. And it gives them the opportunity uh, to raise their family here in Massachusetts, to educate their children, to provide for health care, uh, that they, an opportunity which they might not, n might not have without that racing facility job being there. So that's one of the major parts that it, when I hear the fact about some people say, well, it's just a racing facility and, and you know, and, and we, we don't need those types of jobs. Well, the fact is those types of jobs support families. That's the way I look at it. And I've been to some of these facilities and I see exactly whether they're folks who work in a restaurant, whether they're folks who take the ticket or sell the program or clean the floors or whatever it may be. These are jobs. And for the most part, they're good paying jobs and they provide for families. That's what I think is very, very important that we keep these jobs into the economy and that we use them to combat, you know, what we call, as, as I stated earlier, the so-called uh, blue-collar depression. But I think um, that what this bill also does, it reflects reality. I don't know if many of you saw the uh, story which was uh, written recently in the, in the paper and it talked about gaming and in terms of the amount of money that's going, going out of state. It was staggering. They estimated over a billion dollars each year is going to Rhode Island, especially Connecticut, and in some cases, Bangor, Maine. Why someone would go to Bangor, Maine to play slots for Massachusetts, I don't have a clue. But the fact is that they are, and we're losing that, ma we're losing that money here in Massachusetts. And that's what bothers me, and that's why I look at my job, whether it's a state representative or speaker of the House, is to make sure, number one, that those jobs stay in Massachusetts, and number two, that if there is over a billion dollars being spent on gaming from Massachusetts residents, that that money stays in Massachusetts as, as, as well. So I, I think it's very important, again, that in keeping this money, and in terms of what we're going to use the money for, that we give a, a lot of thought to that. And some of the things that we are looking at, first of all, the slot revenue. We're talking about putting that money towards back into our cities and towns in the form of local aid. Uh, I'm not sure where, where all of you may be from, and I'm sure all from different parts of the Commonwealth or beyond. But I can tell you right now, with the cuts in the budget that we've had to make in the state, it's made it a whole lot more difficult in terms of providing proper local aid for our cities and towns. What this will do, it will provide a source of revenue uh, in the very first year of something like $100 million to go back to our cities and towns. 
so that we can hopefully stop some of the talk that we've had about laying off policemen, laying off firemen, laying off teachers, cities and towns not being able to provide, you know, uh, sanitary services um, and, and whatnot. So I think it's important, again, that we see that amount of money go back into the local aid uh, fund. We're also going to have money that's going to be put back into the manufacturing industry. I think that's an industry which has been lost here in the Commonwealth. And I see that's, a, that's an industry, especially in some of the gateway cities that we have in the Commonwealth, that we can regain some of those jobs back. So not only are we making money, but we're taking that money and we're putting it into under industries, which I'm hoping we can use to create and keep more jobs into the Commonwealth. Travel and tourism, uh, the third largest industry that we have here in the Commonwealth of uh, Massachusetts. Part of the fund is going towards helping them as well grow the travel and tourism industry here in Massachusetts. In addition to that, as I had mentioned, uh, money is going towards, towards education, not only the K through 12, but higher education as well. I know, uh, and the president reminds me of it every day in terms of his struggles and your struggles just to be able to get an education here in the Commonwealth and to try to keep it, keep it affordable. So I think that we, again, we have to do everything that we can to try to make that reality so that we can make an education affordable and give everyone in this state the opportunity to receive a good quality education as you receive here at Bridgewater State. Um, in addition to that, part of the funding is also going to be going back into our rainy day fund. Our rainy day fund, um, as you know, uh, uh, well, you probably wouldn't know this, but about three or four years ago, when I served the chair as Ways and Means, we had a rainy day fund of about $2.2 billion in the state. And it was just that, it's for a rainy day, a stable sort of a savings account, if you will. Well, because of the, the economic downturn that we've had in the last year, well, almost three years now, I guess it's been, uh, we've cut into our rainy day fund to the tune of, of only having about $600 million. $600 million, I know, seems like a lot of money. But when you're talking about a $28 billion budget, the $600 million is only going to get you to take care of some emergencies. It's not going to give you the ability to grow government at all or to make sure that each program has proper funding so that it can function. Um, and what I'd like to say is that um, there are also those, I, kn I know many folks have expressed to me a concern in terms about gambling uh, addiction and what this will mean in terms of gambling addiction here in the Commonwealth of, uh, here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, and uh, a major part of the legislation was to make sure that we address this issue. I am pleased to say that we have devoted some $5 million to gambling addiction here in, here in Massachusetts. Uh, and I say that because after a lot of discussions with the director of gambling addiction here in, uh, here in Massachusetts, a lady by the name of Kathy Scanlon. Um, matter of fact, she just sent me a nice letter to stay for the first time in a long time. She's been able to have sufficient funds to tackle this issue. And uh, when she said that, she said, you know, right now, Mr. Speaker, we only have $900,000 to tackle an issue. And we only have that because we don't have any other forms of revenue that we can use. She says, right now, we've got a problem in terms of, you know, not only gaming, but other, other forms of addiction as well. But because all of it is occurring out of state, but people are coming back here into Massachusetts uh, with the issue. It's Massachusetts that really has the issue. We just don't have enough money to see that these people are, are, are taken care, taking care of and that their issues are addressed. So um, I, I, I think that it's an issue which we recognized. It was an issue that we were concerned about. And in turn, I think that uh, it's something that I think we, uh, we addressed uh, very, very well in, in, in our budget. But we here in the Commonwealth, I, th I think especially in, my, in my, uh, my, my 14 months or 15 months, however long it's been I've been Speaker, have, some, have, some, have had some extreme uh, challenges facing us. Obviously, when I came in to be the, uh, you know, the Speaker of the House, there were some issues with you know, various public officials involved with the court system and, and um, the, the question, I think, of ethics here in Massachusetts came out loudly and clearly that we needed to, that it was an issue that we needed to address. 
And as the president was so kind to point out, in the first 100 days as speaker, I think we addressed most of those issues. We have some of the strong, strongest ethics laws that we put into effect here in Massachusetts than there are throughout anywhere in this country. We had a pension system uh, that was uh, ripe, uh, that were rife with abuse um, and people were taking advantages of various loopholes. Again, we were able to handle uh, and address a lot of those issues, issues which hadn't been addressed in, in some cases, three decades. A transportation system that was on the brink of bankruptcy. Many people talk about the fact when well, uh, last year's budget was about $3 billion in the red because of the, the economy, the downturn in the economy. What many people have forgotten was we had a transportation system that was on the brink of bankruptcy as well. We abolished the Massachusetts Turnpike Authority. We streamlined the way it operates. We changed our system so that many of the workers, whether they be T workers or state workers, would now be going into uh, the state health care system, the state pension system, saving billions and billions of dollars for the taxpayers here in the Commonwealth. And probably the most important thing that we were able to do as a result of these changes that, that we made was to stop the talk of doubling uh, the tolls that were going to be uh, used in our Mass Pike, the tunnels, and, and, and the bridges. In addition to that, not only that, to stop the talk about a 25 cent per gallon tax. That was a proposal that was on the, uh, that was on the board um, uh, to be discussed uh, as, as well. But probably, finally, one of the biggest issues I think we, we faced, obviously, was the budget. Uh, again, last year's budget, uh, we showed we had some $3 billion uh, deficit that we were going to have to make up and, and, and try to um, address. And while I say that other states, other parts, and other, uh, other states in this country are, are having a, well, we all had a difficult time addressing it. I think some states a little bit more than others. I can tell you that when I met with some of my colleagues for the first time, fellow speakers from around the country, uh, they were telling me about the problems that they were having in their, in their states. For instance, some were telling me that the House and the governor couldn't even agree on a budget, so they had to go to court to have the court resolve what the, what, how they were going to balance their budget. I heard stories about furloughs, and I think we've all, uh, if you're a state worker, you know a little bit about what, what, what furloughs and the fact that we took a, a one-week furlough here in Massachusetts. Some, some states were talking about taking six weeks worth of furloughs, again, just to balance their budget. I heard stories about uh, California, for instance, um, which is so far in the red that they could not pay the bills and were issuing IOUs for anyone dealing with the state. So if you provided a service to the state, no matter what that service may be, you got an IOU as opposed to a, a check. And some states were even Re, you know, reverting to uh, trying to cut down electricity of certain days early, again, as a means of, of saving money. Um, we had our difficult times, but I think that in working with myself and the Senate President and the Governor, I think that we handled it very well by using a combination, obviously, of some of the monies which we received from the federal government, um, some of our, our, our stabilization funds, and, and mostly relying upon cuts. Um, to the fact that the bonding agency, Moody's and Fitch, both called upon, called out to Massachusetts as one of the, uh, the strongest states in terms of how we handled our fiscal situation. Massachusetts was, was cited as one of the best states in terms of, of, of the way we do business here. But I think that as we move along, and again, we're going to be debating the budget uh, next week, um, but I think it becomes clearer to me, again, as I travel throughout the state, as I talk to various groups and whatnot, uh, the importance of employment and the importance of jobs here in Massachusetts has become abundantly clear. No matter who I talk to, you know, I'll, I'll hear a story. I'll hear a story about a husband or a wife who's lost their job. Again, they're concerned about health care, they're concerned about providing for their, 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 their children. And that's why I feel that we here in Massachusetts, at least and, and beyond the coming year, really have to put an emphasis in terms of job creation. We have to make sure that the jobs we have in this state, we keep in this state, and more importantly, I think that we have to make Massachusetts more attractive to outside businesses so they're going to want to come to the state. And in turn, with that increased tax revenue, we can do things like as, as we were set up to do, you know, to take care of the disabled, to provide everyone with the opportunity for, for a quality 
uh, education to make sure that our seniors in their later years have the ability to live comfortably um, in, you know, in, the in the remaining years of their life. And I think, quite frankly, with some of the investments we've made, I think with some of the ideas which I think we have set forth in terms of bringing in, in, in increased revenue, I think that Massachusetts' future is actually bright. And I think that we are going to be in a lot better position than many other states that when we come out of this economic recession, we're going to be in a much better place and I, and I see a good future here, um, here for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts.